not too bad. All right, I've got a great member question about how to do the flips drill properly. So, as always, I've got a seven iron for this drill, a Callaway blade seven iron, just to show that even with a club that doesn't typically create a lot of distance, if you implement these motions into your swing, you can gain a ton of distance. You can hit the ball very, very solid. As I've said in other videos, this is a very challenging drill. It's a very valuable drill, you need to do it. But it's a great question, how to do it properly. And in order to answer that, I need to just tell you how people are doing it improperly. So first of all, just to recap, this drill requires you to go back and, and you have to start small. I went after that fairly hard for the sake of just hitting a nice little solid one, 74.7 miles an hour. That's fairly hard for such a little backswing. But the way you want to start is slow. You need to establish success at a small scale. Now, even if you don't have TrackMan there with you to tell you exactly how fast you were swinging initially, you need to just imagine on the driving range, hey, I need to do it properly and just hit this 750 yards, okay? So let's just say that we're just trying to hit it properly and to hit it 50 or so yards. And then once we've established success, then we can just try to hit it a little farther, say 60 or 70 or 80 or 90 or 100, and then just building like a ladder and confirming all the while that you're doing it properly. Now, how do you do it properly? Well, first of all, like I said, understand that in your takeaway, we have this nice little trigger and this little shift to the right with a lot of width. Okay, a lot of width in the backswing. Everyone does this wrong because they go back too far. The goal of this drill, the requirement of this drill is to go back at a maximum with your lead arm parallel to the ground. I don't want to see your lead arm get parallel to the ground. We have to learn this sequencing correct first, and then we can start to add the length to it. So again, I need lead arm parallel to the ground. And as lead arm is getting parallel to the ground, you're going to need to feel like the club shaft is also parallel to the ground because more than likely, you're over hinging the club. And if you over hinge the club too much in the backswing like this, you set it too early, it's going to eliminate the potential to formulate that transition lag that this drill will create for you. So again, a little trigger to get you back. Ensure the club is short. And listen, man, this is going to be one of those things where you think you're doing it and you're not. Record it on your phone to confirm. And as you go back and forth with that process, a part of you will start to get probably frustrated, but you become determined to say, wow, you'll hit it, right? You'll hit it. You'll go back and look at it. And you'll be like, man, I can't believe it's that far. I can't believe I took it that far back. And you'll go hit another ball. You'll think you're doing it properly. You'll go look at it again. Nope, still too far back but you have to hold yourself accountable within that practice to confirm whether or not you're doing it correct. So again, we have to go back lead arm at a maximum parallel to the ground, and then from there, allowing the wrist to loosen up as you just start to unwind, letting the club just stay behind forever, forever, forever. The finish is an afterthought. As I let the right hand release in this drill, it's an afterthought, so only after I've already started to rotate the whole way open. Only then do I allow my wrists to go ahead and hinge. So it has a very wobbly sort of feel as you're getting the hang of it. But again, start slow. You have to start slow and smooth. So as I go through a little progression here, we'll go through a little five ball progression. The idea would be to go ahead and go back, maybe just past your right foot with the club head, nice and wide. Transition, everything will just loosen up, and then I'm still gonna go into a full finish. I don't want a little punch or half follow through. I still want a full finish. So just past my right toe, just past my right toe, full finish. Okay, I barely swung. 39.5 miles per hour, carry was 50, mi uh, 50 yards. But that's the goal, and I could confirm that. I can go back and look at that on video and know that I didn't go too far back but I need to do it over and over and confirm. So again, same deal, nice and wide. I might go back what appears visually to me to be, you know, maybe two or so feet past my right foot this time. So just a little farther back. Okay, still very solid, still a one, five, two strike. I'm up to 50 miles per hour, 82 yards of carry. But again, 
in this process as you're doing it, set your phone up and record it. I can't say it enough not to annoy you. It might be a pain in the butt, but you're, if you're not doing it properly, then you're not going to be productive within your practice. So make sure that you're doing it. All right. Now, once you've confirmed that you're doing it properly, and it's going to take you more than one, two, three, four, five balls, but once you've figured it out and once you've confirmed that, you'll start to progress up. And again, even if you don't have track man, you'll know that your last ball went 80-ish yards as you're visualizing where it land and landed, and you might go a little harder on the next one. And another thing that can be very helpful are just these nice little smooth practice swings. Barely past the right foot, nice and wide. Wrists will loosen up, full finish. All right, so I'm adding just a little bit of length back. All right, now I'm up to 62 miles per hour, still a 152 smash, 128 carry, and we could hit just a couple more every time we're successful, every time it feels solid, every time we can confirm on the phone or the video. That's not an absolute requirement. You don't have to do that. I'm just advising it because more than likely if you're not recording it or if you're not seeing it, you might not be doing it properly. It's a difficult drill and that's the beauty of it because when you figure it out, it will trick your transition into a, basically developing more tour level qualities that allow you to hit the ball more solid much farther. So two more. Still practice swings, very light. Extended, wobble, finish. As the wrists go back, the right wrist is in a condition where it feels like it's very much extended down. You'll see this curve in my right wrist. So as I go back, the right wrist feels like it's in this condition. And then as I start down, the right wrist feels like it goes this way. Backswing, downswing. That's the function of the right wrist in order to help you achieve that really solid transition lag that allows the club to trail, deliver a really strong, consistent strike. Okay, So the wrists have to be in that learning environment, really educating those hands this way. Left wrist acts this way as well. Feels like you're uncocking the wrist down and then back this way. Okay, This way. This way, this way, this way, here, here. We just keep rotating, and then we release really in line with the left shoulder. Feels like a delayed re release into a full finish. So a little more speed here. A couple rehearsals. Don't be afraid to rehearse. It's the other big key difference between players that are doing it properly and players that aren't. Many of you will just stand here and think about it and get very tense. This drill won't work if you're tense. You have to move, you have to rehearse, you have to put your body in an environment where you're sending the message of what you're trying to do even before you hit the shot. So rehearse, 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 okay? More speed there, we're at 142 carry. Club speed's up to 66.9. Again, if I'm the student, if I'm learning this, I'm gonna record it. I'm gonna go back and confirm what I'm doing and I'm gonna see a lot of great qualities. I'm gonna see a lot of lag, a lot of forward shaft lean. And of course, again, that's taking this loft on the club, reducing it quite a bit. Tour average dynamic loft is around 20 or so degrees with a seven iron, 20, 21, depends on the player. And as you do that, the ball goes a lot farther. Obviously, a club that has 20 degrees of loft on it is going to make the ball go a lot farther and create a lot more ball speed than a club that has 34 degrees of loft on it, like most standard 7-irons do. If you're asking yourself, well, is it going high enough, the answer is going to be yes. Most good players create quite a bit of lag, and players with lag are great ball strikers. Players that tend to cast the club a lot and deliver way too much loft well, they might be able to hit the ball nice and high, but it's too high, it's inefficient. It's not an optimized ball flight to be consistent and to get the most distance out of your shots. So we'll go one more, just a little harder. Again, key, big, full finish. This is an inverted sort of drill. It's awkward. 
you're going to want to go back far and stop short because you're going to try to hold this lag and just jam it into the ground. It's inverted. We go back very short, but then we start to unwind, and again, we're going into a big full finish. Catch yourself. I bet you're probably not going into a big full finish. So very short back. Add those rehearsals. Nice and relaxed, whether we hit it good or bad. speed added there 71.4 miles per hour 156.4 carry again still same seven iron 152 smash pretty accurate shot little baby draw you kind of get the idea but I think holding yourself accountable is going to be one of the most important components of mastering this drill I've said it over I'll say it again it's difficult but it will trick your brain into achieving many tour like components Go ahead and work on it. As always, you can post any videos or questions to the private Own Your Golf Game Facebook group. I will personally respond, give you some feedback, and make sure you're headed in the right direction.